This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thanks for letting me do this for so long. I'm getting the sense that I've exhausted all the easy to rank franchises already. I mean, I've still got to confront every Sonic game, which will take such a long run up that I might as well try out for the Olympic long jump team while I'm there. But for now, I want to talk about something reasonably relevant at the moment, Resident Evil, or as I like to call it, House Bad. Frankly, I'm loving that Resident Evil is relevant these days since the last 27 years haven't been too kind to this monolith of horror gaming and only recently have we turned a corner towards salvation. So yeah, we're going to rank all of these while ignoring Japanese only releases which thankfully keeps the video under an hour long and hopefully we'll come to some kind of conclusion about its quality by the end of it. I mean what else are we here to do? Oh boy, did Resident Evil bottom out in 2016, and if this franchise ever does worse than Umbrella Corpse, is it core or corpse? Do I care? I don't, I don't, I don't want to look it up, I don't actually care enough. It'll be a sad day indeed. This franchise was a little rudderless at this time, desperately searching for a new direction to go in, but a generic multiplayer co-op shooter with not even a passing resemblance to anything Resident Evil, apart from a few zombies stumbling around in the background, was not the way to go. No one bought it, no one played it, and yet Capcom was still kind of hoping that this might become some kind of eSport. It'd be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Resident Evil Survivor might not be quite as pathetic, but it's surprisingly close since it was made to be played in Japanese arcades with a light gun, but when it made the big swim to the west, nothing about the game was changed so that it could be adapted for consoles. So instead of a fast paced shooter, you've got glacially slow control sticks that can't keep up with some pretty rapid zombies. It's also ugly as sin, but still takes ages to load every level. Absolute torture to play. If you exclude the recent remake of Resi 4, our reverse is currently the latest original game in this franchise, and oh my god, why does this keep happening? Capcom have some kind of obsession with multiplayer deathmatches, and it works as well in our reverse as it did in Umbrella Corps. Or was it core? This one's a little better since it has recognisable characters who inexplicably morph into unrelated Resident Evil monsters, but it's so unfinished that it's very hard to appreciate any of this. All of this? It just ain't working. Please stop. Oh hey, so apparently Capcom learned absolutely nothing from bringing Resident Evil Survivor over from Japan because the sequel, weirdly subtitled Code Veronica, because if we name it after a good game, people might get confused for long enough to buy it. Yeah, this is trash too. Only came out in Europe and it's just as bad as the first game. At least its name reminds me of a time when these games were good. It sure didn't take long to stumble across a mobile game, but you probably didn't expect the first one to be from 2001. Yeah, Resi Zombie Buster is about as basic as you'd expect a mobile game from 22 years ago to be. You're pushing zombies back by shooting them and eventually killing them, but apart from the occasional boss stage, it never gets more exciting than just a whole lot of this. Japan held on to Zombie Buster for five years before sending it to the West. They needn't have bothered. Let's see what 10 more years does for mobile games. Mercenaries Versus is going for more of a conventional Resident Evil experience, more specifically the Mercenaries mode that is usually one of the best parts of main console titles. Squishing it onto a phone isn't really worth the hassle and there are plenty of better ways of experiencing Mercenaries that doesn't have shaky controls and poor optimization, but I have to be reasonably impressed that it is somewhat reminiscent of the game mode that it is attempting to emulate. I'm not gonna get it confused for anything else. Hey guys, real quick, my channel has been approved for YouTube memberships now, so if you fancy supporting my channel more directly, you can become a member for as little as £1 a month and gain access to some nifty perks, as well as being featured on my channel page. Hit the join button below this video if that sounds cool to you. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Umbrella Corps becomes even more of a terrible idea when you remember that Capcom already gave this a go with Operation Raccoon City four years earlier. Did it work out for Capcom in 2012? Fuck no, of course it didn't. This game isn't quite as bad as Umbrella Corps because I don't want to commit a crime while playing it, but it's still an awful version of a type of game that Resident Evil just isn't built for. You know these are supposed to be horror games, yeah? At least there's some more zombies in this one. So Zombie Buster wasn't great, but Capcom weren't too disheartened since one year later, they asked Living Mobile to create Resident Evil Assault The Nightmare. Here's the big positives, it actually goes some way towards being a super basic horror game on a mobile device, and I like that the art style has this anime quality to it that comes through nicely on the animations and the creature design. The bad news is that this is still incredibly bare bones and becomes repetitive very quickly. It feels more like a Resident Evil game than Zombie Buster did, but we're still a way off something to feel genuine pride for. 
Switching gears entirely with mobile releases, we have Resident Evil Uprising, which can only be described as a reimagination of Resident Evil 2, but for phones. I kind of love this because it looks like a fan-made demake of Resi 2 and you get that goofy disparity between some awesome sprite work and characters looking a little too strange. But I can't fault the ambition at play here. Bit strange to revive an 11 year old game for mobile devices while basically keeping the characters and little else, but there you go. Conceptually, Resident Evil Resistance is a really cool idea. It was included as part of the online component of the Resi 3 remake, and you've got four survivors competing against one mastermind who is laying all the traps and enemies. I love asymmetrical multiplayer when done well, and as cool as Resistance is for a couple of hours, the shoddy game balance will put you off any lengthy play sessions. And actually, the online servers are so inconsistent that they probably won't last that long anyway. I play games to queue. You'd think that Capcom would have eventually found a way to make a light gun game work in the West, and in 2003, they finally did it. All it took was deciding that they should just make a PS2 game instead of converting an arcade cabinet into a console game, and sure enough, with some extra light gun support, we've got something semi-functional here. I mean, Resident Evil Dead Aim isn't great. It does at least try to be more of a Resident Evil game, but it can't match up to a proper light gun arcade game. It's a shame this is the last one, they were getting somewhere with these. If it sounds like I'm talking about a lot of mobile games, just be thankful that quite a lot of them never made it out of Japan, otherwise this video would have been an awful lot longer. Degeneration is based off of the CG movie of the same name, and this game based on a movie based on a game is trying very hard to be Resident Evil 4. Leon's got roundhouse kicks and can chat shit to merchants all day long, but the biggest issue here is the controls that are trying to translate all of the control of a console game onto an iPhone and it doesn't quite work. I shake the phone to shake off zombies. It's too brilliant. Sensing that a standalone mercenaries video game could possibly work well as long as you don't make it for a phone, 2011 saw Capcom stick the Mercenaries 3D onto the Nintendo 3DS, and this naturally came with new problems. The 3DS's hardware does replicate the feel of Mercenaries quite closely, and if it was priced properly, this would have been a clever purchase, but sadly, it's a full-priced video game that runs out of ideas frighteningly quickly. It's a hard sell for even the biggest Resident Evil fans. This franchise is a tad obsessed with being creative and getting every ounce out of its characters and settings, and so of course there's a Resident Evil game on the Game Boy Color. I mean, why wouldn't there be? Gaiden is a bright horror game that is somewhat limited for what it can do and show on a Nintendo console of a teen rating, but I kinda like the compromises made here. The biggest shock is probably how decent the story is, which likes to throw a few wrenches into the mix and has some big twists and turns along the way. The narrative quality of this Game Boy Color game, I swear. So Degeneration was Resident Evil 4 but on mobile, so you can guess how Resident Evil 4 Mobile Edition played out. Yeah, so it's pretty much a direct adaptation of Resi 4 with a lot of similar locations and enemies. The cutscenes are replaced with slideshows, but it did shock me just how many bosses have been replicated in this game. This somehow extends as far as the regenerators, and they're just as scary as they were in the original game, perhaps even more so while you're grappling with the imprecise controls. Hey, if you sort those out though, this is pretty special, I gotta say. As far as main series games go, you'll struggle to find one worse than Resident Evil 6. Where the best thing I can say about it is that there's a lot of game here. It's ambitious, this one, almost to a fault, as you jump from character to character on seemingly unrelated campaigns that are all too loud and far too ridiculous for me to take seriously. We're a long way away from its horror roots at this point, and it gives Resi 6 the vibe of a big summer blockbuster that prioritizes spectacle over literally anything else. You can turn your brain off and this is probably okay. Hey, what do you know about the confidential reports? If the answer is nothing, don't worry, clearly they were named that for a reason, but these are four mobile games numbered files one to four that shake up Resident Evil substantially by making it a turn-based game where you move on a grid. This is very wild and does a number on the game's pacing, but at the same time, I kinda like this slower approach to horror. It gives you more time to react, but if you find yourself in a room that you don't have the resources to overcome, the dread washes over you really slowly. I'd love to see more of this, honestly. 
There was a time not too long ago that Resident Evil Outbreak was seen as just another Resident Evil game. It's just another 7 out of 10 to stick on the pile, another average game to highlight how amazing the main series was at this time. It actually has the opposite effect these days. Outbreak manages to bring the expected Resident Evil qualities to an online co-op audience, and despite coming out in the early 2000s, it works shockingly well, and it feels like it was designed with co-op in mind. It had a few expansions that merely gave you more scenarios to screw around with the co-op. Given what's happened to the franchise since this, I'd say it's above average now. I'm covering more than 30 games here, so excuse me if I'm bunching Revelations 1 and 2 together. Hey, Capcom did the same on the Switch in 2017, so I'm doing it today as well. It's actually really interesting seeing these two games side by side, because the first game was a 3DS exclusive for a while, whereas the second was built for home consoles from the start. The Revelation games are okay, not really comparable to bigger resi games, but they're like diet mainline games. Schlocky plot and gooey monsters, I'm right at home. I know I said that Dead Aim was the last light gun resi game, but while that little side franchise was finished, Capcom had big plans for the Nintendo Wii. The Umbrella Chronicles is so much more fun than those other light gun games, and I think the Wii is a big factor here. Pointer controls have always been that console's strength, and matching them with an established franchise that really wants to have you shoot things on rails is a match made in heaven. It's not scary, but it is fun. And only now am I realising that I put the Dark Side Chronicles as a separate entry in this ranking, when it's arguably even more similar to Umbrella Chronicles than the two Revelations games. Oh well, it's very similar to the previous game, but I reckon just a tad scarier? I don't know, obviously the light gun side of it makes it more fun, but being on rails can feel restrictive, and if you're taking control away from the player, that can be scary. Probably works just a tad better with this one. What we'll soon find out is that Capcom are aware how good the first Resident Evil game is, and if you're looking around for a game to adapt for mobile devices, we've already shown that you could do a lot worse. Resident Evil Genesis is a retelling of the events of Resi 1, but for phones, with a complete shift in perspective and a move away from full-on horror towards puzzle solving instead. Very simplistic, but evidently a game that has had a lot of effort put into it, and you can play Genesis and get a fairly original experience. Surprisingly good, really. If you're in the market for a Resident Evil game that kicks you in the nuts on the regular, then thank god that Capcom made a prequel for the GameCube. Horror games generally aren't too challenging and are more of a test of your nerves and occasionally resource management, but Zero is perhaps one of the most naturally challenging games in the saga. It's less horror focused and likes to throw you into scenarios that are a little too one-sided, but I appreciate that there's a game like this in the franchise. The inventory system is a lot, but I'm all for taking creative liberties in pursuit of a challenge. We've definitely got that here. If I made this video 5 or 10 years ago, you likely wouldn't have had to wait until this far into the video for me to talk about Resident Evil 5. It's a strange one that looked to replicate the success and incredible popularity of Resi 4 and doubled down on that game's preference for action over horror. Before, that would annoy me, but these days I love what this game does for co-op shooters, even outside of Resident Evil games. It's campy and ridiculous and pretty far removed from anything scary, but it is a lot of fun. Just so long as you don't play it on your own. Sheva's AI still gives me nightmares. I bet you didn't expect me to get as high as number 8 and still be talking about mobile games, but you better believe it, because Resident Evil The Missions is such an underrated game. This is a 2005 release that's designed like a modern mobile game, but without the shackles of microtransactions. Since there are 100 missions in this game which allow you to dip in and out of the little nuggets of video game as you fancy. For a mobile game in 2005, this is seriously impressive and would probably go down well all these years later if Capcom can restrain themselves with the microtransactions, of course. You can feel the confidence returning to Resident Evil in a big way by the eighth game in the franchise. Wow, what does that tell you? Village is kind of strange because I don't vibe perfectly with the story and moving it to a wider setting doesn't always work perfectly, but it hits every mark when it comes to atmosphere and characters. More specifically character design, because Lady Dimitrescu is a shot in the arm or a bite on the hand for Resident Evil's public image. Like, this franchise is mainstream again, and I love it. It's not flawless and has me a little cautious for where the main series goes after this, but I'd rather be cautious than embarrassed. 
Capcom have got into the habit of remaking these games, and this brings up a tricky balance with Resident Evil 3, an excellent game that sadly wasn't able to maintain these standards when it was remade 21 years later. The Resi 3 of 1999 was incredibly tense and used Nemesis as an overarching threat that fundamentally shifted it away from anything that Resident Evil was done before, and taking the fight to the streets keeps things very fresh and exciting. 2020's remake is okay, but a lot of Nemesis's scenes are scripted, and this throws a lot of the tension out the window. It's louder and more action-y, and I can't say that it's a good remake. Decent overall, just nowhere near as good as it once was. Oh boy, is Resident Evil 7 the right game at the right time? Before 2017, this franchise was a bit of a joke and had Umbrella Corps releasing in 2016 to show the world that Capcom had no idea what they were doing, but a first-person return to form of terrifying environmental design was exactly the sort of thing that this franchise needed. It's beautifully paced out so that you can take in every inch of this claustrophobic farmhouse, and it's able to use the first-person view as kind of a fast-tracked return to genuine horror. Playing this in VR is absolutely ridiculous, and I seriously recommend it. My opinion of horror games is hardly holy gospel, but the first Resident Evil game is some of the best horror you can find anywhere. The further back you go, the more stripped away the version will be, with the first ever Resident Evil game being probably the best example of a fledgling style of horror game, with subsequent remakes simply bringing up to modern graphical standards. It's supremely tense throughout and is shockingly competent at balancing scary moments with schlocky B-movie goofiness. It's a horror game with character and soul. They should make a franchise out of these. If sales were directly proportional to quality, Code Veronica wouldn't have stood a chance. It came out in the Dreamcast at a time when the console was struggling for sales numbers, and recognising this, Capcom expanded it for a PS2 release under the name Code Veronica X. This was likely done because Capcom knew they had something special here, and sure enough, this game is a huge leap forward for Resident Evil that uses a more dynamic camera and 3D environments in order to make the game a little more action-y, but no less terrifying. It's the next natural step forward for Resident Evil, and even all these years later, it's aged so nicely it's unreal. My guy is using moisturizer, I'm so proud! The Resi 3 remake only disappointed me as much as it did because the Resi 2 remake was every bit as good as the original. There's still very different styles of making a horror game, with the original Resi 2 using those fixed camera angles and tank controls to slow down the pacing and ramp up the tension, and the remake's going for more of a traditionally modern over-the-shoulder perspective, but the remake is surprisingly faithful to the original. They complement each other so well, and the remake's new coat of paint and quality of life upgrades only serve to highlight just how well designed these games were in the 90s. Simultaneously a time capsule and a glorious celebration of quality. I'm really happy that the Resident Evil 4 remake went so well because I can put these two games at the top of this list with a lot of confidence that I've made the right decision. Is Resident Evil 4 the scariest game ever made? Nah, not really, but it does strike the best balance between the franchise's two main tones. The remake plays a little less like a cartoon, but it doesn't shy away from all the ridiculous, quintessentially Resident Evil scenarios that you're taken through. Resi 4 did so much for action games in general that it's easy to forget that it's still laced with strong beats of horror and just a cavalcade of creative gross-out monster design. It's the gold standard for a reason. Thank God that the remake didn't mess with the formula too much. Ashley is even kind of tolerable in the remake. I long thought that to be impossible, you know? And holy crap, that is all. Do you agree, or would you have a different Resi game on top? Let me know in a comment down below, and make sure to like the video if you had fun, and hit subscribe for more videos, including a whole month of Zelda videos coming up in May, so hit that bell for all those tasty notifications. Last week I talked about mistakes that were left in video games, so go watch that, and I want to thank my top supporters on Patreon, including Blue Kader Ray, Christopher Robinson, and Ryan Down. Thank you for watching, and get ready for Zelda month!